Now let's switch to eastern boundary currents. Of course, eastern boundary currents are situated on the eastern edge of the oceans. The most famous for us, of course, is the California current. If you live in the Canary Islands, or if you live, excuse me, or in Morocco, your, the, your most famous eastern boundary current is going to be the Canary Island current. But in fact, the Peru current and the Benguela current are also famous eastern boundary currents. Eastern boundary currents tend to be broader. They tend to be slow and sluggish. They tend to have speeds of less than one mile per hour in contrast to the Gulf Stream with its speeds of five to six miles per hour. They tend to transport much less water than the eastern, than the western boundary currents. Nonetheless, because of their properties, they do host or they are the locations for some of the most productive waters on our planet. In fact, eastern boundary currents really provide probably or fishing grounds within eastern boundary currents make up about 10% of the world's fisheries catch. They're extremely productive environments, eastern boundary currents, and as a result, very important. The reason is that eastern boundary currents are often the places where we have this phenomenon of upwelling. We'll talk about that a little bit in a few minutes. Let's take a look at the California current and look at, again, a false color sea surface temperature image. And all these images have sort of different origins, so they have different color schemes, and this is probably an older image versus the ones we saw earlier, but depicting the same kind of thing. Warm water in red, so here we are in Southern California down here. Here's San Francisco Bay, just to orient yourself a little bit. You can see the warm waters within the bay. You can see the warm waters in the California Bight and the Southern California current system down here, but here you see cold water and you see this cold water actually peeling off the coast in, in the shape of what are called jets and filaments and here you see it actually wrapping around and you see this extreme complexity as cold water moves off the coast due to this phenomenon called upwelling and it's when we get a north wind blowing along the coast that moves water offshore for reasons we're going to talk about in a few minutes that we get this very intense upwelling and very complex structure to the California current system. But it's this upwelling that turns out to fuel the very highly productive waters that we find in the California current system. And it's one of the reasons we find blue whales that now visit here in the summer and gray whales that visit in the winter. That those highly productive waters, although gray whales aren't feeding much, although there's some debate about that now, as they move from north to south in the winter time. The blue whales certainly come here to feed, and this is what fuels that productivity and fuels the tremendous fishing that we have off the coast of California. Here's the same kind of thing, or a similar kind of thing, off of Benguela. Now this is a, a, just a true color image, and you see this sort of green cloud here, and it's not phytoplankton, it actually turns out to be a type of bacteria, a type of, um, so, uh, that produce this type of sulfur produced by bacteria. These bacteria are feeding on the rich productivity of the phytoplankton, and as they decompose that phytoplankton, it produces hydrogen sulfide, that hydrogen sulfide rises to the surface and gives this kind of phenomenon. So not always when you see green in the water is it phytoplankton, it can be some other kinds of process, but here we have another very productive region of the world ocean right next to a very unproductive region of the world, which is the desert. 